good morning dear students uh, let's start with another topic that is eye structure and vision in arthropoda now coming to the structure the ancestors of the arthropod were having the compound eyes compound eye means the eye which is formed by many units visual units called the ometidia we shall look into the structure of ometidia in the next few slides because there are some arthropods which are having simple eye also made up of one ometidia so the development of the simple eye from the compound eye is the secondary development you can say because ancestor were not having the simple eye so compound eyes are a characteristic feature of phylum arthropoda you will not find such type of eye anywhere else in the animal kingdom uh, within a compound eye you may find 2500 ometidia or the visual units all units are arranged in a radial fashion as you can draw the radius from a circle so similar similar arrangement of the each ometidia is one ometidia can be can be compared with the one radius of a circle then the next with other radius and the next with other radius all ometidia that means visual units are having similar structure each consisting of many cells arranged along its central axis we shall look into how they are arranged enometidia basically consists of following parts number 1 the cornea uh cornea is the outermost lens you can see which is visible on the compound eye from the outside so if you look uh, more closely you may be able to observe that these scales are formed each scale is basically representing one cornea this is one ometidia and at its anterior end outside you are having one cornea so each ometidia is having one cornea at its outer surface this cornea is also called as outermost lens this is transparent so light shall enter into the eye through it and it is basically a cuticle layer uh, you must remember that the arthropods body is covered over by the cuticle layer so basically the cuticle layer on the eye is called as cornea if you look at the surface view of the eye you may be able to see so many scales or the facets so uh, which are seen clearly by visible lines you can see because it is the arrangement of the cornea in such a fashion that they are they are uh, they are giving the appearance of the scales and so many lines thus giving the graph like appearance as the paper of, as the paper of graph looks like below each facet so every scale means there is one cornea and one cornea means that one ometidia is lying behind one cornea so because it is convex in shape it is thicker in the middle and narrow at the two ends then there are the cornigian cells next to cornea you can look at, look at two cornigian cells are present uh, between the rest part of the ometidia and the cornea <clears throat> these cornigian cells are basically the epidermal modified epidermal cells uh, you must remember that the arthropods body is covered over by epidermal cells and the epidermal cells secrete the body covering called the cuticle so cornea is the cuticle whereas these are the cornigian cells are the 
epidermal cells. <clears throat> no, uh, because you know that arthropods undergo the molting, that is shedding of skin. So when they undergo molting, along with the rest the skin of the rest part of the body, this cornea will also shed off and these cornean cells will secrete the cornea again. Then you are having the cone cells. You can see that these are the cone cells present uh, beneath the cornean cells. They are a group of four cells, you can see. They are the four cells basically arranged in such a fashion. Uh, they are situated beneath the cornean cells. These cells, these four cells secrete and enclose this crystalline cone. This crystalline cone is again transparent structure and its basic function is to refract the light, to change the path of the light, you can say. Okay, and this crystalline cone is called as second lens. First lens, lens was cornea, second is the crystalline cone. And the inner end of the cone cells are long and tapering. You can say this is one cell. So inner end is long and tapering, whereas the outer end is little broader. The part of the eye from the cornea up to the posterior most end of these, these cone cells is called as dioptrical region. This region basically focuses the light upon this posterior part, which is called as the receptor regions. So the function of dioptical region is to is to reflect the light back in back on the receptor regions, which will help in the formation of image. Then you are having the rhabdom and retinal cells. So you you see in this receptor regions. Uh, the four cone cells, they are, they are standing on the rhabdome. Rhabdome is in turn secreted by the, the retina, retinal cells which are present around it. Okay. Rhabdome is again transparent, uh, crystalline structure which uh, basically uh, meant for receiving the light coming from the dioptical region. So it is the receptive structure you can say. Uh, the, the, these, these retinal cells and the, rep, uh, the rhabdome, they together form the receptor region of the eye. This is the receptor region of the eye. Anterior was dioptical region. <clears throat> then you look at that the retinal cells, they are resting upon the basement membrane. Below this basement membrane, nerves are coming through the optic nerve from the brain. So the image that will be formed over here or the light that will be received here shall be communicated through these nerves to the brain for the formation of image. Then you have the chromatophores. Chromatophores means the color bearing cells. You can say at the anterior region, the dioptical region is having the color cells or the color bearing cells called the iris pigment, whereas the receptor region is having the, rab, the, the retinal pigments surrounding the retinal cells. Iris pigments are surrounding the cone cells, whereas the retinal pigments are surrounding the retinal cells. Both these are together called as chromatophores, as these are color bearing cells. Now, these cells are amoeboid in nature whether they are retinal pigment cells or iris pigment. That means they can move in order to focus the light during the different intensities of the light. They may move from this portion to this or they may move from this portion to this 
or they may squeeze down to a single point. So we shall look in, into, uh, in, into the next slides where you will come across the phenomenon of the vision formation. Coming to the vision, uh, compound eye is deficient in focusing ability. It don't have the focusing ability much and the clarity of image is also not much. But such an eye is efficient for picking up motion and for peripheral vision. So as you uh, just imagine yourself, your eye is not compound eye. You are looking at the forward direction and at the same time you are not able to look on your sides. So you are focusing at the point, then the points uh, just adjacent to your focus may not be so clear. So here what happens that they cannot focus, but they can have the efficient picking up of motion and peripheral vision. They can look at the peripheral region also and they may pick up the motion. That means a slight movement of any object surrounding them can be judged by them. It function as an efficient organ of photoreception. One often mounted on movable stock. You can look at this. This is the compound eye present on a movable stock. So because of having its location on the movable stock, it can rotate at the 360 degree Celsius, the 360 degree, and thus giving the vision of all of its surrounding. No, the mantids you must remember, the prime mantids you can say, have great res resolution and good stereoscopic vision for precise attack because they use to prey upon the other insects. So for the precise attack, they have great resolution and great vision also. No, uh, they used to see the prey with the, with the, with the, with the pometidia in both compound eyes at the same times so that uh, they may be able to have a very good uh, ambush or the close range ambush so that the prey may not escape them. Each omatidium is capable of producing a separate image of small part of the object seen. So because there, is, there are separate units so every uh, separate unit, the omatidia, which is also called as visual unit, is forming a small part of the image. Whole image is not captured each by each omatidia. Therefore, the image of the object viewed consists of several dark and light tiny pieces or supports. So because every omatidia is forming a different support of image, so there are pieces of pieces are supports of all of the uh, object seen so that the total image of an object formed is a sort of mosaic because uh, be depending upon the intensity of light some support will be light in color some will be dark in color so it will give it, it will give you a, a mosaic appearance moving objects can thus be detected so you can uh, imagine as if you are uh, capturing a video and you want to see a particular movement in a whole video, then you will zoom it. So basically, every omitidia is uh, zooming the single part of the of the object or the small part of the object. So if the object is having a, a movement on its one part, it will be detected. The vision affected is said to be mosaic vision because it is a similarity with the mosaic art of work. We shall look into the next slide where we shall see the mosaic vision formed by it. The nature of composite image form varies according to different intensity of light. Why it is called composite image? Because the whole image is the combination of so many small small parts of an object uh, given by each material. There are two types of image which are formed, apposition image and superposition image. Apposition image, no, uh, this is the condition during the day. 
what will happen in the because in that day you will have the bright light so during the bright light you look at the pigment cells the proximal pig pigment which were the pigment cells present around the retinal cells and the distal pigment the pigment cells uh, around the cone cells they completely have separated one omitidia from the other you can see because they were amoebaid in nature they were able to move so they have moved in such a fashion that each omitidia you can see they are completely separated from one another what will happen then because they are separated from one another so if this is the object the oblique ray of light coming to the omitidia shall be refracted on the pigment itself and it will be absorbed there it will not reach back on the receptive part so the refractive ray of light will not be able to form the image only those rays of light which are coming exactly at uh, straight way from the object to the omitidia will reach to the receptive part and will form the image no uh, you can see we are having the butterflies butterflies are night blind they cannot see during the night so in those uh, insects in those uh, butterflies this type of position remains permanent whereas there are some other insects which will have side type of position during the bright light but they will go they will change this position as we shall discuss in the next type of uh, image formation uh, during the night this is the type of image that i have already shown you that uh, the whole of the image will be formed in a small small units small small you can say the parts uh, given by each omitidia uh, by dark and light bands so the whole appearance is having a mosaic like of appearance the sharpness how sharp this image will be formed it depends upon the number of omitidia involved and degree of isolation from one another degree of isolation means how much the pigment cells have isolated one omitidia from another more will be the degree of isolation more will be the sharpness of the image more will the number of omitidia uh, which are giving image more will be the sharpness of the image then uh, you are having the second type of image called as the superposition image in the superposition image you look at that no the pigment proximal pigment cells they have restricted themselves up to the posterior portion of the Uh, retinal cells and accordingly the cone cells are also again not wholly and solely separated by the pigment cells as pigment cells distal pigment cells have restricted themselves to this position because they are not separating each omitidia from one another so even if in this case the oblique image oblique ray of light coming from the image shall also be uh, refracted refracted to uh, uh, from one omitidia till pass to the next omitidia and ultimately will reach to the receptive portions the receptor portion where the image shall be uh, formed and the signal may be communicated to the nervous system so in this case this is the condition during the uh, during the dim light that is the condition during the night you have the moths moths are often active during the during the night they have permanently such type of condition set in their eye that is why they are not able to fly during the day so they are day blind insects no because of this type of condition the image will be overlapping why overlapping because you look at this at this receptive at this receptive region uh you are receiving the rays directly straight away from the image also and then from the sides also so here the images from the different omitidia are overlapped upon one another so such type of image are called continuous or superposition image it is not sharp 
but the animal gets some sort of idea of the object moving about its surrounding. So I have already discussed the blind. Uh, again, most asopods are able to adjust their eyes to form both type of image that we have discussed, but some they have stick to one. So if they are stick to second one, they are deep blind. If they are stick to previous one, they are the they are the night blind. Then there is a variation in the number of eyes in the arthropod also. So most most arthropods have only two types of eyes. That is two lateral eyes, compound eyes present on the side. But sometimes they do have certain other small simple eyes which are called as oscilla. They are called simple eyes because they are made up of single ometidia. Oscilla can detect a lower light level and have faster response time while compound eye are better at detecting edges and are capable of forming images. So this is the difference between these two that the oscilli response is fast and they work even at low light level also. Most species of arthropod with compound eyes bear just two eyes. If they are having two eyes and two eyes are separated from one another, you can see this eye is separate, this is eye is separate, then this type of arrangement is called as dichoptic arrangement. Then sometimes there is another type of uh, arrangement called as cycloptic. Cycloptic is the arrangement uh, among the uh, arthropods uh, where the eyes are crowded at the median pole portion. Two separate eyes are not visible. So in some groups of animals, the eyes may be crowded together in the median plane. Example is Archeogonetha, wingless insect do have such type of feature. In extreme cases, such eyes may fuse. And this is the condition when two eyes are coming close together at the center. But sometimes both eyes may fuse also, such as in Copipoda and in Cyclops also. So such type of eye, median eye, which is presented at the center and sometimes may be fused, sometimes two eyes may be may not be fused but they are present at the center. This type of arrangement is called as cycloptic type of arrangement in the arthropods. Then you may have the holoptic type of arrangement. In holoptic type of arrangement you can look at that the eye is surrounding whole of the head. It is covering whole front portion of the head called the fronds. They are not leaving any free space in between them. So because they are uh, because they are not leaving any free space between them so this type of arrangement is called as holoptic type of arrangement it is uh, present in some uh, acroceridae anisoptera and tabinid now then uh, this cycloptic type of arrangement is having again another type of features where if these uh, these insects are aquatic insects, then simultaneously they have to look into the air as well as down into the water. So they have two types of ometidia. The lower ometidia, which are looking into the water, they are small in size, whereas the upper ometidia, they are large in size. So uh, this, uh, this uh, the holoptic type of uh, arrangement of the of the eye may have such type of features also so here the examples of uh, tabonus lineal is given over here which is having such type of that's why this compound eye is shaded differently from the ventral side from the lower side and shaded differently from the upper side because of two types of ometidia looking deep into the water into the water and looking into the air as well thanks this is all about the structure of the eye and the vision in case of the topo.